they tell us. <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll let them if they attempt to pull something like that. Um, the topic is focused on energy. Um, it's not their only area of expertise, and uh, in case you're not aware of that. Um, Bill Kinst, um, who uh, comes to us from the University of California, Berkeley, um, will be hosting this afternoon's program, and uh, himself will um, provide um, a few comments as a sort of a, uh, wrap up uh, session at the end of the end of the program for the day. Um, Bill didn't want an introduction. I prepared a rather lengthy one, and uh, now he claims that he doesn't need one. I, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, so, uh, in addition to Bill, we have, uh, fortunately, with us this afternoon, uh, uh, Stan Gita. I mean, Stan Gita, Stan Adams. We had Stan Gita earlier. Stan Adams, Dan Woodfin, Uva Cooler, and Bob Kester. Uh, who each have different area of expertise that they're going to speak on this afternoon. But um, so we can get right into it, I'll let Bill Kins begin and uh, um, hope that you can uh, join us for the entire program. There you go, Bill. Okay. Uh, we're going to make this kind of quick. Uh, what you're looking at this afternoon is what you get. This is the energy faculty. And it's called that because we're so energetic. Since I'm the oldest member of the school, though, I'll welcome any contributions of energy you can give me. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Uh, the thing that we're going to find in all of this is that uh, threading through all of these presentations, all five presentations, about short of ten minutes each, is the double interest of one integrating alternate energy sources, some, some ideas of how we're going to handle these things when they finally get into some production state that they're economically feasible or the fuels that they replace are too expensive, which is any minute now. And the other one is to conserve these resources by a variety of means. Uh, what I would like to do in a sense of introduction to the four other members is to give you some kind of idea of just how evangelical they are about this and how thorough they have been in spreading the word. First, Dan Adams, this is the newest member of the group, comes to us from VPI where he got his master's in this subject of solar energy integration. And since he has the highest academic accolade in this area, why we all defer to him for any form of intelligence about it. Uh, his most recent uh, bit, however, was at Kokomo High School, in which he did a dissertation to the students there on solar energy installations. Uh, the second member of our group, Bob Kester, uh, also this kind of the second newest in this group, uh, has recently done a radio report uh, in Portland and here at BC, BSU with Judy Thorpe, again on solar energy and uh, finally an, an, an emphasis of conservation using natural sources. Uva uh, Kohler kind of comes at this back door. Uva's uh, main thesis has been multi-protection uh, uh, considerations of disaster situations and uh, looking at these kinds of problems, the natural inclination is to beef it up. One of the problems, of course, is that you get a very heavy use of resources. And so Ruva has been studying that kind of an application, not necessarily at a first uh, or an installed resource conservation, but a continuing resource conservation. In, in a coupling of this and has been doing some work uh, down at Indy and continuing education with uh, architects and engineer students on the subject. Dan Woodfin, um, a few minutes ago Bruce was saying the science faculty and he said there were only four and the only guy I could figure out that he was omitting out of the five was Dan, but I don't think me. Yeah, I guess. It, it might be so. I think there's probably a few students out there that believe you. Okay. 
uh, Dan has done some, some things uh, on a TV program with Jim Nickerson uh, on both radio and news, uh, newspaper reports of some of his activities here in Muncie and Terre Haute and Nashville, Indiana. He recently did a uh, uh, talk with the Electric Heating Institute down at Nashville and he is about to do another one shortly with the Rural Electric Co-op and the subject on all of these is solar energy and housing. And finally, yours truly just gave a talk up at Argonne at the Central States University Institute, uh, which is a collection of, of uh, universities about us here. And the subject of my talks was old buildings as a resource conservation. Uh, now what I would like to do as we step into this thing, if, if you're willing is to save the questions till the end, till we all get done, and then we'll sit here at a round table as long as you want to fire them at us and answer your questions as you shoot them to an individual faculty member. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Stan and let him have at you. Um, as Bill mentioned, I recently gave a lecture at uh, Kokomo Junior Senior High School. Out of that uh, came two possible uh, extensions of that lecture. One is the possibility of giving high school seminar series to uh, students from several high schools on uh, architecture-related solar energy. Another extension of that was uh, some real-life uh, projects in the Kokomo area. Uh, one is a climatic study for that high school. Another is for a chemistry uh, instructor who wants to have, who wants to consider the possibility of putting a solar system into its house. And that leads me rather conveniently into the second item that I'm in, active in, which is a class in uh, solar energy and housing. That project is being carried out by uh, Boyd Bundy, one of the students in that class. He is actually building it or designing a retrofit for that chemistry teacher. And that class is also taught by Bob Kester. Uh, <clears throat> in that class, uh, we have several uh, people working on uh, real life projects. Tom Bast is doing a Muncie residence, uh, is proposing a solar energy system for that, as well as designing the building. Um, Jack Martin and Greg Stoddard are working on the Underwood residence. How real that is begins to be a stretch. Uh, <clears throat> this particular sun path uh, was part of that class work. And this is, leads me into the third part of the, where, where I'm active on. This become, is the, uh, is, uh, is the, heat, the proposed Heliodon project. Um, and I, I like to think of that as a project uh, rather than just a device. But the, <clears throat> the purpose of this device is to simulate the path of the sun, and it will have an exterior light source. And it will be used for identifying exactly the solar conditions of this particular environment. So you, this is a mock-up of the real project, and the real project will be eight feet across. And you can take an architectural model, sit right in the middle of it, and set up the uh, lighting, the sunlighting conditions for any day of the year. In addition to that, you can calculate the altitude and azimuth from it, as well as if we can get into my slides now. Uh, shut out the lights. Okay. <laughs> I'm new at this. Uh, this is an overlay of what that looks like. This is a sun path for uh, Muncie, Indiana, and for all the other 40 degree latitude. Um, <clears throat> by using this, we can project graphically the effect of the sun path as it would be here. By making overlays such as this one, we can uh, test <clears throat> and evaluate the effects of daylight, uh, the strength of solar radiation, things of that nature. Uh, let's see if I can get this going. Um, another project I'm working on in the... It's terrible awkward up here. 
is uh, a collection of slides for the library. I'm taking uh, slides from each of the energy faculty as well as slides from Virginia Tech and slides from the University of Oregon and other sources, duplicating them and putting them in our library. One of the things that we're trying to do is duplicate different types of uh, solar energy systems in terms of components. Um, how do you focus that? Um, we're also trying to put together various systems that are in existence. This one on the left is uh, one in Coos Bay, Oregon. It's been one of the pioneers. It's been around for quite a while. We're also making a study of solar energy in design in its uh, diagrammatic phase used in discussion and, and classes. These incidentally are available to all the student body. This is some more of the examples of the diagrammatic slides that we're putting together, uh, both in section and in uh, plan. <clears throat> the one on the left is some of the uh, slide collection, again, that we're hoping to put together to use to explain uh, how the sun works, how it works on buildings, how it affects buildings. The one on the right is uh, more of our my uh, slide duplication. It is the beginnings of a methodology. It is uh, if you take the sun path and look look down on it this way, the original sun path you saw was what you'd see. Now, if you take this sun's arc and look at it from straight ahead, this is what you'd see. Um, part of one of my research interests in the near past and some of, and right now is uh, in wood in wood burning technology, and uh, these are some of the slides that I duplicated these from Popular Science, in turn used uh, to explain some of those principles. I won't go into those right now, but uh, this was generated from what I became aware of at the New England Solar Energy Conference. And that was, at their conference, they also combined the Toward Tomorrow Fair, which brought into play all of the different envir uh, environmental issues and the energy, alternative energy issues. This is a conventional fireplace, and Americans have realized now, or begun to realize, that that's an extremely inefficient way of burning wood, both for heat, well, especially for heat. And that they're trying to, to plug that up, to make up that for that mistake. This is another. Uh, a wood burner from America. Um, and I'll, I have a couple of these examples. This is a grate that uh, is proposed to have water circulated through it. We're not, we're not about to admit that the fireplace is totally useless. We're going to try and burn the wood and uh, somehow get some of that energy from it. This is another American made. Uh, and I'd like to show you some of the ones from Scandinavia that I think are, oops, they did it again, rather handsome. <coughs> these are cast iron and baked enamel and they're controlled air. This model on the left, you come in and you put in wood in the morning, one load of wood. Uh, it will burn all day long. And in the evening, you come home from work or you come back from whatever you're doing, you put in another load and it'll burn till morning when there are small colds there, in which time you can put in more wood again. Very, very efficient, very controlled. Um, these are some more. Notice this white model. They come in all kinds of baked enamel colors. Um, these are not too well uh, exposed, but this one on the right is a, a really a nice deep red, and the one on the left is uh, a deep avocado green. Very nice to fit in any living room. Uh, <clears throat> this is more of the Norwegian's work. This, is, this one is intended to uh, heat a fairly large building on the order of a small office building. The one on the right is another one that is cast iron with the baked enamel. It's uh, a very nice shade of, of dark blue. Uh, there were other <coughs> energy ideas there at the fair. And uh, this one on the right is, is a methane collection system for an outhouse. <laughs> However, this one on the left the one on the right, Solar Survival, is a group of people who identify that the world's problems are not necessarily focused around space heating, but are focused around hunger. And that if we have millions of people around the world starving to death, we need to work on ways of feeding them. 
what they propose is by using solar energy uh, devices such as this, we dehydrate food and use it as a method of preservation and spreading it around the country. You can dehydrate food uh, to down like something like 10% of its weight and still maintain uh, the majority of its uh, nutrition by simply adding it to water. This is uh, recycles a 50 gallon oil drum. It is surrounded by cow wall insulation or uh, plastic and uh, dries food on the order of uh, 24 hours. It also has a light inside it for cloudy days. So if you don't have enough sun and energy, you can keep, up on, keep on schedule. Um, along with the wood technology, you have to have a, an industry to support it. This one on the left is the conventional uh, hydraulic wood splitter. The idea that you can saw it up with a chainsaw, but it takes forever to split it. The only problem is that it starts at about $600 in this. Uh, if it breaks down, it's very hard to fix. The one on the left is on the hub of a car, and it turns. Now, as it turns, you just hold the wood on it, it just pulls it on and, and splits it. It looks like like this when it's focused. Um, and it simply bores its way into there effortlessly. If you uh, just hold it up, the wood up to the thing, it'll pull it on and split it. If you have any problems, you shut the car off. Um, along with the other energy ideas, there were an array of, uh, of uh, wind generators. The Jacobs uh, were well represented. There were also um, the later, more exotic methods, the Darius here, rotor. And the rotor is rather nice to see in operation. This is a Savannah rotor. This is not from the, the, uh, from the fair itself, but it is, uh, there were several of them there. Oops. Okay, this, <clears throat> this is kind of hard to tell what it is at first, but this rather awesome figure here is me in my shorts. And this is a, <laughs> this is a blade off of a windmill that they are proposing at the, University of Mass at the University of Massachusetts. This is the central hub of that. It's a three-bladed windmill. Um, and they're putting it together. Uh, it's pretty good size. This uh, device in the background here is the actual uh, shell that goes around the outside of the motor. Fairly large scale application. Hope. These are some of my slides from uh, uh, the Sun and Art. Uh, it's just one of my side interests. I'll kind of go through them fairly quickly. Oops. The one on the right is uh, juvenile art. <laughs> this one on, the, uh, on your left is 17th century uh, French playing cards. The one on the right is a plate collection. This is a gold foil from Europe on the left. Um, one of the things that the uh, at the conference, it, and, and probably my closing point, is that in order to have uh, the Solar Energy Conference, they also had the Toward Tomorrow Fair, which took into account energy uh, issues. And the New England people have been burned probably as badly as anybody with this energy shortage. And when they had the energy, when they started planning this, they found that they had such widespread public interest that they had to have entertainment for the mass that showed up. And this is a rock festival that went on there in order to attend take care of that. Um, a lot of interesting characters were there. I won't try to connect this to solar energy. I just think they're rather clever. While you're trying to figure out what these two lovely winches have to do with solar energy, I'll turn it over to Bob Kester. Uh, <laughs>